Hello everyone and welcome back to this Tuesday edition of the Five Star News. I'm Kayla Cumby and we have lots to get to today, so let's get you started with our announcement team for the Tuesday shows. Here's Mattson Hogue and Tyler Ingram with What's Up Heritage. What's up Generals? I'm Tyler Ingram and this is What's Up Heritage. It's good to be here this Tuesday morning. Tonight, if you're interested, there will be a financial aid Google Meet at 6 p.m. for seniors. Your counselor will be available to help you. There are scholarship applications in the counseling office. For the link to the Google Meet, visit the school website. If you are a CTAE student, you are invited to the haunted courtyard. There will be a scary movie played and snacks will be provided. Social distancing will be required and masks are strongly encouraged. Finally, report cards will be going home on Thursday, so hopefully you have good grades. That's it for announcements. Here's Madison with the weather. Thanks, Tyler. I'm Madison Hogue, and this is your weather forecast up until Friday. Today, there is a high of 73, a low of 61, with a 20% chance of rain. Tomorrow, on Wednesday, there will be a high of 69, a low of 66, with a 90% chance of rain. Thursday, there will be a high of 75, a low of 51, and an 80% chance of rain. And on Friday, there will be a high of 63, a low of 43, with a 20% chance of rain. To the news now, and Thanksgiving is just right around the corner, and we here at Heritage love to get into the holiday spirit as much as we can. So yesterday was no better day to start our annual Thanksgiving food drive. Students and teachers here at Heritage highly participate in this fundraiser. You can compete for cool classroom prizes and all the food benefits our community. Here is Colton Buckles and Nicholas Pearson with this report. All right, the Thanksgiving food drive uh, sponsored by FBLA, starts on Monday, October the 26th and goes to Monday, November the 16th. So we still have a lot of uh, needy families in the community. That's where the food goes. It goes to help those families. And then any extra food that's left over goes and to, the, uh, to the food banks. So it's getting ready to be close to Thanksgiving time. We got to get through Halloween and then we have Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving means it's time for our annual food drive. So. Make sure that you are paying attention to your first block teachers and bring in some canned food so that we can help some people at Thanksgiving time. Let them have a great Thanksgiving and make sure, I think the winning, the top three, I think get pizza parties for their first block. So that's super cool. Whenever you're surrounded by mediocrity, it's easy to rise to the top, sort of like a thermometer in the heat. And I'm surrounded by mediocrity, if not absolute inferiority, in the fact that no one gives me a run for my money anymore on the Thanksgiving food drive. Just a little word of warning, there are some people in this building that are cheaters and they try to steal your cans. So like if you um, know anybody in Coach Broom's first block or anybody that is familiar with him, don't let him take anything from your room or send any of his people to your room because he is a thief and a cheater. Surrounded by slappies like Patties and Taylor and Wolf and the rest of them. So most likely it'll be another layup year and easily another victory for Team Broom as we feed the numbers of people of the needy in the Catoosa County and surrounding areas. If you feel like you've got enough guts, you're welcome to attempt to compete. Most likely you'll have to get used to disappointment. Thanks, you guys. And this week marks our first week of going back to school for four days. So goodbye, Cohort A and Cohort B students, for the time being at least. But how is it going for all you students out there? We've only been back for two days, but we have Carson Palmer and Caden Snyder to get all the details on how you students are doing out there. Uh, today's our first day uh, with everybody back together. I want to welcome everyone back. Uh, the hallways are a lot more crowded than we're all used to, but uh, it is incredible to see all you guys back at school. I hope you're as excited as I am. Um, so we'll be going four days a week until November 30th, and at that point we'll go back to five days a week. Yeah, I think uh, I don't really like it that much, but I mean, I guess I got to see my friends and um, just be here with everyone and it's just there's a lot of people, so, yeah. Um, please remember, uh, with all of us in the building, to follow the safety procedures. Make sure you're wearing your mask. Make sure it's covering your face, covering your nose. Um, also, make sure that um, whenever possible, you're keeping some distance. Keep that six-foot distance whenever you can. Coming back four days a week It's going to be really fun. I get to see all my friends and, and everybody, and we're all in the same classrooms now. Um, now that we're back in school four days a week, I think my grades might go up. Not sure though. Um, 
I'm excited uh, to go into the second part of the semester with everyone back on campus, and it's just good to see all your faces. Thanks, guys. Looks like most students are happy to be back to school. Moving on now, and there's a very important pretest for all the sophomores out there, and it is the PSAT, and it is coming up this Thursday. How do you prepare for it, and how does it benefit you? Well, those are great questions, and we have Dan Anderson and Aaron Brewer with the answers. Take it away, guys. So the PSAT is actually a practice test for the real SAT. Uh, and what the SAT is, it's an actual college entrance exam, uh, and it is to it's to figure out where kids fall in terms of preparation for college. So the PSAT is actually a fantastic, uh, fantastic way for kids to assess how they're actually gonna do in college. Uh, the PSAT is given here. Normally it's for all sophomores for free, uh, but this year, given our crazy schedule and stuff, we had to uh, just set everything up voluntarily. Uh, so we are actually giving the PSAT this Thursday. Uh, a lot of kids have already signed up for that. Uh, we are in the process of posting the rosters and the signups outside of the counseling office this week. Uh, so students, if you have already signed up for the PSAT, uh, you can check these locations. We have three locations outside of the counseling office on the walls. You can check those locations and figure out uh, which room you need to report to and figure out which teacher uh, is going to proctor your exam. Uh, and again, this is a great way for you to practice this, this exam and figure out where you fall in terms of being prepared uh, for college. So be sure to check that out this week and we'll see you on test day. Howdy, uh, I'm gonna take PSAT sometime soon. Um, uh, I think I'm going to be pretty good in the science, the reading, and the math, but I don't know about um, like the English, not English, the social studies part or the history part, but other than that, I think I'm going to be good. Don't forget to bring your calculators and good luck to all the students that are taking this test. Time for a quick commercial break here on the show, but don't go away because we'll have your latest heritage sports action next in sports. Who am I? That sounds like a very vague question. Who am I? I am Matthew Cole Denton. My friends and family call me Cole. But that is only my name. The phrase, who am I, requires a much more detailed answer. Who am I? I'm a 14-year-old freshman at Heritage High School. If you were to ask my family, who am I, they would say, I am creative. I am kind-hearted and a valuable member of the family. If you were to ask my friends, who am I? They would say I'm funny, unique, maybe even fun to be around. If you were to ask me, who am I? Well, I would say, I don't know. I myself am still figuring that out. I love to create things, play games, and simply hang out with friends and family. Who am I? Well, we are just scratching the surface. I'm Cole Denton, and I am the Five Star News. Welcome to Sports Day, everyone. I'm Zach Brown, here with my main man, Dylan Brown, to catch you up with all the general sports action this week. Let's start you off with the football team this week, and they look to snap a three-game losing streak as they face the Central Carrollton Lions. The Lions are a tough team to beat, and so we're going to send it straight to the store to catch up with the recap. But that win right there, like that's, that's more than just a good win. I mean, that, that's probably the best win we've had in seven years. I mean, Temple was up there, Stevens County in the playoffs a few years ago, but we had no business beating that team. We, had guy, we lost, you know, we're losing people left and right. We lost one of our best players early. I mean, but they just kept playing. It felt like, good. I mean, it was a team effort as always, but um, it felt really good. Whole team's getting involved. Logan Lowe had a big half. He went out. I mean, we make some big plays, second half. Uh, you got to be happy. Well, we were underdogs coming in, and we've had a three-game losing streak, and so you know, it's always nice to get back on the books. But we played hard. We had a few injuries. Slope went down, which is really crucial because he's played both sides of the ball, big plays. But it's great to just be back and get a win. Listen, how about a freshman quarterback that has to take a snap on fourth and one? that's never taken a snap under center before. How about that, you know? How about Nick? 
getting benched and coming in this freaking second quarter, throws a dime for a touchdown and never quit, scores two different times and just leads us like it's nothing, like he didn't miss a beat. You know, that kid didn't get a he didn't get many reps at all in practice this week. You got guys like this one over here laid out that's playing both ways and freaking just having to tackle a beast on the other side all night long. I mean, Swope comes out here and plays well right off the bat until he gets hurt. Um, Logan Lowe comes out and makes plays and, and continues to play. I mean, Humongous win, and they look to make it two in a row this Friday as Northwest comes to Heritage. Not only volleyball, the Juno has been racking up wins all year, and they were in action this past weekend in the Sweet 16 round of the state playoffs here at the Taj. How'd it go? Here's Brooklyn Collins and Mitchell Kennedy with the story. All right, so Saturday we hosted Chesity in the Sweet 16 round of the state tournament. Um, the girls came in really ready to play. We started off that first set with a 9-0 run, and from there we just kind of kept going. We never really looked back, so um, we kind of dominated the whole game. I think that we played really good um, last Saturday because we all talked and came together, and we just – play it as a team instead of just playing for individuals. Um, so that means that we play Wednesday um, at Central Carroll for a 5.30 start time in the Elite Eight round. So this is the third time in five seasons that we've been back to the Elite Eight. So I'm just proud of the girls for getting us back to this point, And I'm excited to see how far they'll go. And then on Wednesday, we're going to their house. So um, we play three out of five, so I just want us to all be together as a team like we did on Wednesday, and we just play together whenever we talk more, and we have confidence in ourselves, so if we can beat them, then I want us to go further than we did last year, so I'm very excited. A few weeks ago, we played Central Carrollton, and uh, so we're going to know a little bit of their tendencies. I also think playing at them at home will be a little bit different, so we'll just have to make sure that we're prepared and that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Congrats, ladies, and good luck against Citra Carrollton in the lead eight. The softball team is still alive and well in the state playoffs this year. Yeah, that's nothing new for our girls. But last week they had forced a game three against Jefferson. Eli Owens and Jameson Sirk are going to show us the recap and the preview of the Elite Eight versus Bainbridge. Yeah, it's a big wins for us. You know, we, we lost game one, two to nothing. They played really, really well against us, and they did what they had to do to beat us. But, uh, you know, our girls responded well. Uh, they came back and won six to nothing. Um, and seven nothing. So it was two big wins for us. You know, we're in the Elite Eight now and uh, we're traveling. Um, we lost a universal coin flip in the GHSA and that's okay. Uh, so we're traveling to Bainbridge and we got them in the Elite Eight and they'll be a good team. I mean, they're, uh, they're, they're a first class team. Their coach does a great job with them. They, they really uh, have a pitcher and a catcher, but they're, they're both pitcher and catchers are world class. Um, you know, the pitcher is going to Florida. She's committed to Florida. She's number one, number four player in the country uh, in this year's recruiting class. So, you know, it'll, be pretty, it'll pre be pretty big for us. But I like our matchup. I like our slappers against her and, uh, you know, what we can do. Yeah, it's going to take us executing our game plan. Um, you know, th this girl is, is good. She's like Rachel. She's going to be 66 to 68, uh, but she's just straight. She's flat, and, uh, you know, it's something that we can exploit that uh, if we get our foot down we get on time with the pitch. Uh, you know, she's going to get her strikeouts. We talked about it. Like, somebody that, that's a power pitcher like that, she's going to get her strikeouts. She's going to get 10-plus strikeouts. We just got to eliminate the 15 to 17 strikeouts a game. And so if we're able to do that and we're able to, you know, understand that it's going to take probably one or two at bats that we string together uh, to get a couple runs, I, you know, if we get a couple of runs, I, I, I like our chances for it. Now back to the news now, and tonight's the night, everyone. It's the CTAE Haunted Courtyard. You'll have a movie, food, and decorations, and they're actually showing Hocus Pocus. This is a chance for you and your school friends to come out and watch a fun movie for the Halloween time. Here is Noah Lovell, Jacob Simpson, and Landon Wheeler with all of this report. The yard is going to happen today from 7 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. We'll be in the academic courtyard. We have a lot of different decorations we're gonna be setting up and we will be showing Hocus Pocus. Uh, I will be at the haunted courtyard event. Uh, there's probably gonna be some food. There'll be a lot of other people and it's gonna be a great Hocus. time. On a normal year, we would actually go to the movie theater and pick out a spooky movie to watch. However, with everything going on, we decided to do it here at the school. Plenty of room to social distance. Just remember to mask up and there will be treats. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for this Tuesday edition of the Five Star News, but we will be back Friday with a brand new edition. Until then, stay classy, Heritage. <laughs>